Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 18th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Laravel, a PHP framework that includes a component called Ignition, whose main purpose is to make debugging easier and also display prettier error messages. Well, it turns out that in older versions of Laravel, that's uh, 8.4.2 and earlier, this component suffered a remote code execution vulnerability that we are now seeing exploited. The vulnerability is being tracked as CVE 2021-3129. It was uh, discovered or at least patched uh, fairly early uh, this year. Exploit attempts will be able to modify variables and execute arbitrary code. What we are seeing so far are attempts to essentially detect if a server is vulnerable. No actual exploit seen yet, but our honeypots also are not vulnerable. So we probably don't yet see that second part that actually then would load some kind of exploit payload. First of all, components and frameworks like Laravel need to be regularly updated. This is not the only vulnerability that has affected Laravel in the past. But on the other hand, the, the ignition component is specifically meant for debugging. So it's only being enabled if uh, Laravel is running in debug mode. This is a configuration setting. So you don't actually need to uninstall here anything on a live server. You just need to make sure that the live version of a site is running in the correct configuration. So this uh, debug uh, code is not loaded. And regardless of the remote code execution vulnerability, you never really should run a live site in debug mode like this and provide attackers with very nice looking and detailed error messages. And FireEye disclosed limited details regarding a vulnerability in the ThruTech Kalea protocol. ThruTech is a company that uh, makes a software development kit that is used often in video cameras and various devices, things like baby monitors, security cameras, and the like. And the vulnerability here essentially is that the only thing used to authenticate a camera to ThruTech is the UID assigned to the camera. Now, the UID is a little bit more complex here. It's not just a serial number, it's more randomized. It's 20 bytes in length, but still, it could still be obtained as FireEye points out via social engineering or other attacks. Now, once an attacker has the UID, the attacker is now able to impersonate the device, essentially registering a duplicate device with thought text. If the user now authenticates to the device, the attacker is able to capture the credentials. And with that, the attacker is now able to access the actual device that had the targeted UID. I see obtaining the UID still as a challenge, but still this is something that should be addressed. Again, look for uh, various firmware updates for affected devices. A little bit hard to tell if your device uses this particular SDK or uh, uses uh, the uh, thought tech uh, servers here to establish uh, connections, but uh, as I said before, it's probably good to have sort of a monthly IoT patch day where you check all of your IoT devices and make sure you got all the firmware updates for them installed. The updated firmware will enable a TLS, which of course solves some of the problem here. Also, it may enable an authentication key in addition to the UID to make the process of spoofing the original device more difficult. According to FireEye, ThruTech does advertise uh, connections from 83 million devices each month to its servers. 
And Rapid7 disclosed uh, details regarding uh, vulnerability in Fortinet's 40 web web application firewall. This vulnerability has not yet been patched by Fortinet. A patch should be coming by the end of the month. But the blog post published by Rapid7 does have enough details to actually exploit it. What keeps this sort of in check at this point is that in order to exploit a vulnerability, an attacker does need to have credentials, does need to be able to authenticate. But once the attacker is authenticated, they are able uh, to execute arbitrary code using the system or root account on the device. Interestingly, there is also, as the blog post points out, uh, authentication bypass vulnerability that was discovered in this appliance earlier this year. So if you haven't mitigated that yet, then of course you have a real problem on your hands here. But then again, these admin interfaces probably should never really be exposed to the public internet. And just since we're talking about patches, there's also a patch available for Google Chrome. Let Google Chrome do its automatic patching thing. Nothing really sort of extraordinary in this particular update. That's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.